What's up guys, Mike here again. Glad to have you guys back. Today is very exciting. We got the new Sony TV with us over here. This is the Bravia XR Mini LED TV. And this is specifically the X93L 65 inch model. In full disclosure, Sony did send the TV in for us to check it out, but I'm not being paid to say anything good or bad about it. So if there's anything that sucks, you'll definitely know about it. So without further ado, let's get right into the unboxing and see what it's all about. Hi guys. So we got the TV set up now. It was fairly simple to get everything ready. And we actually fit a PS5 in my TV media console to make everything work. I'm pretty happy about that. So there was something special that I noticed is that you can actually set up the TV stand in three different positions to match whatever console or place that you can put the TV on. And in this case, we have it on the raised setting. So it leaves a little gap between the TV and the stand. I didn't choose to raise the stand purely just for aesthetics because uh, what else could possibly fit in there? That's right, we got a sound bar <laughs> here yeah. as well. <laughs> so here's the setup with just the TV and here it is with the speakers all installed. I got the soundbar and the wireless subwoofer and rear speakers hooked up to this system. Sony actually has some new features that make these speakers work with the TV. We'll talk about that and other new features in just a bit. But for now, with everything ready to go, let's jump right in and talk about the picture quality of this TV. So Sony is known for its image processing using its Cognitive Processor XR, which improves the images that the TV produces. And after watching a few movies on it, I gotta say that the colors are very vibrant. Everything looks super clear, and just showing you guys some 4K clips on the screen can show how awesome the picture quality is on this. TV. Watching content that supports HDR or Dolby Vision is especially impressive. It has great gradient handling, the colors really pop, and everything still looks really realistic and natural as nothing looks over processed or over sharpened, so I'm quite happy with how good it looks. Now, because this is a mini LED TV, there are more LEDs and more dimming zones. The XR processor controls thousands of these ultra-dense mini LEDs to produce deeper, darker blacks, brighter brights, richer colors, and better contrast just because there's a lot more control over what's being displayed on the screen with so many LEDs. Just look at these scenes from Avatar Way of the Water. There's a ton of blue hues in this movie and you can tell them all apart while seeing the details as well. Even when I'm watching older movies which are non-4K like Tron, the upscaled image still looks really good. The image processor is literally stretching this movie like 4 times the pixel resolution of 1080p. And somehow, it's still able to make it look quite decent. I mean, you can see a tiny bit of noise up close, but what needs to be sharp still looks very sharp. And overall, it makes older content very watchable on a 4K TV like this. One thing that I was really impressed with though is with the black levels. The blacks just look really deep. I mean, when I turn off the lights in the scene, the blacks just look as dark as the room. The screen literally disappears into the background. If you're wondering about blooming, I would say that it's not very noticeable at all. When there are subtitles on the lower part of the screen, I don't see any signs of it. But when I did do the blooming test, you could see some of it. It's more noticeable with the long white bars than with the little dot. So if you're really sensitive about this kind of stuff, it's definitely not going to be an OLED TV killer for you. But at the same time, I don't think the blooming is any problem at all in my experience. The dark scenes look awesome and very detailed. And the benefit of a mini LED TV over an OLED TV is that it can definitely get a lot brighter. So the X93L is great for watching shows or gaming in a bright room. When I was filming these movie and gaming clips to show you guys, it was in a bright room like this where I had my lights on full power and everything actually looks pretty good. The screen can get pretty bright. So this is just really convenient and gives you the peace of mind that you can use the TV during the day or night without having to dim your lights or close the blinds so that you can see better. However, I did find that if you're watching the TV at an angle on the side, you do see a lot of reflections if there are light sources around the TV. The TV is basically like a huge black mirror, it's pretty reflective. However, the X93L does have Sony's X anti-reflective technology implemented into it. I think it does reduce some reflections if the light is hitting it directly in the front. So it's pretty good only if you're watching from the front. So here, I got this light strip on the side. If I'm not looking at the TV sitting down, I can see quite a bit, especially from the side. But as soon as I'm sitting down, it's all good. So if you have a larger seating area or if you're inviting a ton of friends over to watch sports or something and they're sitting on the side, they're definitely gonna see those reflections. 
Moving along, let's talk about gaming. The TV has four HDMI ports on the back. One is on the side and the other three are on the bottom. Now, only two out of the four are HDMI 2.1 ports, meaning that only two support the 4K 120Hz refresh rate for gaming. This is actually quite odd as I see other high-end TVs have four nowadays. I had to use one of them, which supports the ARC to connect to the soundbar. And luckily the soundbar had a HDMI in, so I'm still able to plug in my PC through that port and use the other HDMI 2.1 port for the PS5. As for the gaming experience itself, playing Final Fantasy 16 on the PS5 was quite the experience. Everything looked so good and so smooth, the details I'm able to see is just astounding. Going through the story scenes is just like watching a movie and fighting the monsters are super addicting. This TV really does deliver a beautiful gaming experience. Now, one of the cool features is how the TV automatically detects when the PS5 is running on the screen and enables game mode, which basically minimizes input lag and turns on variable refresh rate to allow smooth and clear responsive gameplay. These settings can be accessed by pressing the menu button on the remote and it will bring up this overlay. Here you can see whether VRR or motion blur reduction is running. You can also adjust the black levels here to make it easier to see in darker scenes. And then there's a crosshair option where it shows you the crosshair in the middle of the screen. I don't think I'm ever going to use it, but you can change the color and the style as well if you really need to. So this game mode is a very useful feature. However, it would have been nice if this menu could have provided more information like what the frame rate is. Because if I didn't look it up, I would have never noticed that Final Fantasy 16 was actually capped at 30 frames per second. Despite it being at 30 frames per second, it didn't really bother me at all. Everything still looked very smooth, even in times when there were a lot of enemies on the screen and while I'm hacking away at them with my spells. Now, to really test out the TV for gaming, I used it as a PC monitor as well. I was able to play League of Legends on max settings at 120 frames per second with no problems at all. Input lag was definitely very low, I had no trouble playing with my wireless keyboard and mouse, but somehow, I still lost the game. I've been stuck in bronze for quite a while, so I can't really blame the TV at this point. To test out motion blur, I also played games like Overwatch, and I'm just very impressed with how all the motions look so smooth and fluid, and really just how responsive the aiming with my mouse is. It feels like there's no input lag at all, and I'm just gaming as if I was just on a normal desktop setup. I actually made a more in-depth video about using a PC in the living room. Make sure you guys check out that video afterwards, I'm sure you're gonna like it as well. Moving along, let's talk about some other cool features, especially with the audio. The X93L has two mid-range drivers, two tweeters, and two woofers built into the TV. So right now, I'm going to play some music, and uh, I'm going to use a TV speaker just by itself first, and then we're going to use the external speakers, and you can let me know in the comments below if you can hear a difference. Anyways, that's just a little sample of the sound, but the thing that I'm not sure if you noticed or not is that I can actually control a lot of the speaker settings from the TV menu itself. So usually when you have home theater speakers or just external speakers, it comes with an extra dedicated remote. And these are the two remotes that I have over here. I can just press this button over here, the wrench, and I am able to control the rear volume, the subwoofer volume, activate voice mode, night mode, sound field, which is like a 3D effect. So basically I won't need to use this controller, but there is one thing that's missing over here. Sony has this thing called 360 spatial sound mapping. It's pretty cool. It basically uses the mics and the speakers to like map out your room and then uses the sounds to bounce it around so that it creates like a really 3D effect and creates phantom speakers and all that. So in order to do that and optimize the sound, you're gonna have to choose the input, which you use for the soundbar, which is this one over here. So from here, you need to go to setup and then advanced settings and go to sound field optimization. So it's not too bad. I still do not need to use the other remotes. However, I would have appreciated if I could just go from the same menu and press one button and 
I'm here kind of thing. And while we're talking about speakers, there's another unique feature. They've managed to implement the TV speakers in this whole sound system as well. So this feature is called the Acoustic Center Sync. So the TV and the soundbar has a 3.5 millimeter jack for you to connect them together. And all this does is that it makes the sound feel like it's coming from the TV itself versus the speakers below. So this is another feature that I haven't seen anywhere else before. And next, let's talk about the OS. So the TV is running Google TV. You got all the apps and everything is actually pretty fast and responsive. There's no lag at all when I'm like scrolling around picking shows to watch. But the thing I appreciate here is that I can actually use Google Assistant with it and control the TV with voice commands. So the TV actually has a mic that's built in and the nice thing is that it actually has a physical switch that I can turn the mic on and off. So that's a nice kill switch to have to ensure privacy. However, with voice commands, I can do cool things like this. Hey Google, turn TV off. Okay. Turning off the office TV. And that's pretty fast. Hey Google, turn the TV on. Got it. Turning on the office TV. Boom. It like instantly turns on. So with the voice commands, I can tell it to switch to different inputs as well. If I want to play on my PC or PS5, so that's pretty cool. So the other thing to mention is this menu over here, equal dashboard. So I think this is actually a new thing. You can control the power saving modes and choose off, low or high. For everything that I've filmed so far, I put on off and that's because I just wanted the brightest settings. There's also an ambient sensor built into the TV. So this is nice because it automatically brightens or dims depending on your light situation. So when I turn off all my lights, I don't have to go in settings and choose brightness and all that. It does it all on its own. So when you go into input, the other thing that's worth mentioning is that it has this thing called living decor themes. It's pretty cool. When you put it on, it's basically like a screensaver. It puts on really pretty pictures of nature or like black and white pictures. So if you're not using the TV for a while, it will like display this. And uh, yeah, it's nice eye candy for when people walk into your room and be like, wow, that's nice and fancy. So it's basically like digital wall art. Now, the other cool things that I noticed are actually on this remote. So over here, you have all these shortcuts. Got the normal Netflix, Disney Plus, Prime Video, YouTube. But there are two that I haven't seen anywhere before. So the first one is Crunchyroll. This is the best. I love watching anime. So that's definitely a nice addition. But the other thing that's not available on other brands of TVs is this Bravia Core button over here. So what this is, is like a streaming app kind of thing that has a lot of Sony movies in it. They give you five credits for you to redeem to watch movies for free. These are like the newest things too. You got Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, you got Adam Driver, and um, a lot of other things. So I guess this is a nice perk to have. It's an extra bonus. It streams at a faster rate as well, so that the picture quality is all nice and stuff. Um, yeah, I guess this is just a nice bonus to have. I'm not gonna say no to free movies. <laughs> So my friends, what do you guys think about the X93L? From the time that I unboxed it until now, I've been using the X93L for a whole month now. And for the longest time, I wanted to try an OLED TV just like everyone else. However, the mini LED display on the X93 seems to deliver all the advantages of an OLED, delivering really detailed, sharp, and bright images with really deep contrast that makes really deep blacks and colors that seem to just pop off the screen, all without the risk of burning. So overall, this TV is quite impressive impressive. It's finally the age where I can use a TV as a monitor for PC gaming or even work on my Mac. I haven't tried that yet, but I should. The overall design actually kind of reminds me of the Apple Studio display. However, the Apple Studio display is actually made of all metal, but the aesthetic kind of looks similar. So using this as a PC monitor has been great. Gaming on it has been a beautiful and fun experience. And it was pretty cool seeing how they made the TV and speaker work together so that it's just easier to use overall. I'm not sure if Samsung or LG has something like this. Let me know in the comments below. I've reviewed many monitors in the past, but this is my first time reviewing TV. So if there's anything I missed, make sure to comment below and ask questions there. I'd love to help you guys out. And I know mini LEDs are kind of new, but right now, would you guys choose a mini LED over an OLED display? Let me know why in the comments as well. And if you're still watching right now, thank you so much for supporting my videos and watching till the end. Make sure you drop a water wave emoji in the comments below to let me know that you watch up to this point. And that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye.